All right, so this is some big news that just dropped the other day. Apparently, 200 Bush, McCain, and Romney alumni endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. Here, let's read read some of this together. Um, more than 200 Bush, McCain, and Romney alumni endorse Vice President Harris for president. More than 200 Republicans who previously worked for either former President George W. Bush, the late Senator John McCain, or Senator Mitt Romney, endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris for president in an open letter Monday obtained exclusively by USA Today. We reunite today, joined by new George H.W. Bush alumni, to reinforce our 2020 statements and for the first time jointly declare that we're voting for Vice President Kamala Harris and Governor Tim Walz this November. The Harris campaign has worked to highlight its backing from Republicans who oppose Trump launching a Republicans for Harris group this month and featuring Republican speakers at last week's convention. Over the weekend, a dozen prominent Republican attorneys who worked for former President Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, and George W. Bush endorsed Harris for president. The group included conservative former federal appellate judge Michael Ludig, who plans to vote for a Democratic president for the first time. So look, you got this going on. At the same time, you also have, as you all know, RFK Jr. endorsed Donald Trump. He's going to campaign with him. Tulsi Gabbard endorsed Donald Trump. She's probably going to campaign with him. So this is, you know, sort of like the information war, the optics war. Oh, yeah, I got, you know, I got uh, Republicans. Oh, yeah, I got Democrats. Oh, yeah, our tent is bigger. No, our tent is bigger. It's all, you know, this is all part and parcel with an election. Now, what's my overall take on this? So I actually have very mixed feelings on it. Um, let's start with... Let's start with the negative, right? The negative is, look, I don't want this to be an indication of how she's going to govern. If you have... George W. Bush is a war criminal. George W. Bush was one of the worst presidents we've ever had in the history of the United States. He started illegal wars. He cut taxes for the rich. He deregulated corporations. We had the subprime mortgage crisis and the Great Recession under his watch. He was a horrific president. And Dick Cheney was absolutely evil as his vice president, right? And so there was speculation that maybe George W. Bush was going to talk at the DNC and endorse Kamala. And me and everybody I know went, no! Because, guys, policy is the core of it, and policy has to matter, right? So if these people endorsing Kamala is an indication that Kamala is going to say, oh, maybe I'll move a little to the right on this issue or that issue, right? Then I don't like it. Then I don't like it. Now, on the flip side, if they're coming to Kamala and they are saying to Kamala, look, the reason we're endorsing you, we actually don't agree on a lot of policies, but the reason we're endorsing you is because Donald Trump tried to overturn the last election in 2020, tried to do a coup, had a fake elector slate, did an insurrection on January 6th, and I prioritize the peaceful transfer of power over any other issues. If they come and say that, then it's like, hey, welcome, right? It all depends on whether or not this is an indication of how she's going to run and govern or not. Now, look, the downside is, as you all know, there is something particularly grotesque about the fact that they put up like six or seven different Republican speakers at the Democratic National Convention, while at the same time not allowing a Palestinian American speaker. That, to me, is unacceptable. Because Arab Americans and Muslim Americans are a big Democratic voting bloc, and you have re repeatedly and routinely put your middle finger up to them and basically said your concerns don't matter. We take a lot of money from AIPAC, we're going to represent AIPAC, we're going to be super pro-Israel, and you guys are against genocide, well, too bad, suck it up. See, now that's unacceptable to me. You absolutely, if you're going to build a bigger tent, you have to stay even more true to your values and represent your base. If you represent your base and you represent your policies and your values, and as a result of that, you are converting people to come to your side, that's wonderful. But if you don't represent your base, don't represent the policies and values you're supposed to represent, and these people coming into the tent will have outsized influence and move you to the right, then that's a problem, right? And so look, to be fair, it's yet to be seen. The best indication that I've seen that she's serious is that she picked Tim Walls for VP, and Tim Walls is by far the best governor in the country, right? The policies that they released are actually solid policies. I'm in favor of the policy. They want to eliminate medical debt. They want to ban price gouging. If they stick by those things, great. Wonderful. But this does, everybody should keep an extra eye on what's going on. Because these are some nefarious people who are getting in the big tent. Your tent can't be so big that you just contradict your own ideology. Because then you stand for nothing, right? 
But again, if they are signing up for your policy beliefs, that's fine. But if you are signing up for theirs or giving in on a number of fronts to theirs, then that's a problem. Nobody should have any interest in recreating George W. Bush type policies or John McCain policies. He was a massive warmonger or Mitt Romney policies. No. So best case scenario, you can interpret this through the lens of these people say, we disagree on a lot of things, but we're still going to support you because of January 6th, because Trump attempted to overturn a free and fair election. And in that scenario, then, hey, it's welcome. No problem whatsoever. But again, you better super serve your base, super serve, Ar serve Arab Americans and Muslim Americans and represent that perspective. Right. But unfortunately, that's one of their biggest their biggest problems. That's one of their biggest problems is that all the indication to this point is that. Kamala is going to go the same path as Biden when it comes to policy vis-a-vis -vis Israel. And that will piss off a lot of tried-and-true, loyal Democratic-based voters. And I don't know. Seems like they don't care that much. And they're more busy racking up Republican endorsements. That is a little bit of a red flag, and we got to keep it real about that. But all this stuff will be, will be proven in time, whether or not this sort of thing was good or bad. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.